In this video I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about Plasticity Bridge, let's go! Now before we start, if you're serious about learning 3D, you should definitely join our Academy 2.0 program. It includes the full curriculum of educational materials and courses on bringing you from beginner to intermediate to advanced. In addition, we have a private community with weekly Q&A where you can ask us questions directly and get instant feedback. This is possibly the fastest way of learning 3D right now. Our Academy content is constantly improving. We're adding more content, more value to the offer. For example, recently we added a sub D course for Blender, which it teaches you some new really valuable tools and next is gonna be a really robust amazing plasticity course so check it out link is in the video description now let's talk about plasticity bridge there are two ways of bringing models from plasticity to blender one of them i'm gonna mention very briefly it's exporting to obj file uh, so go to uh, this file menu here export and then choose a the name of the file location save and you only have to change two options in here okay by default it's gonna be trace set to 0 0.5 density that's not dense enough in order to create really you know smooth curvatures that are true to plasticity curvatures switch to angles to cl clean all the trees and then switch density to one and you're good to go mesh is gonna be really dense but it's gonna be really smooth okay then you got other settings in here but honestly they're the same as in the bridge so we're gonna be talking about the settings when we're gonna be in blender and i'm gonna show you how, you know how to set these up so then press OK and it's going to save an OBJ file. I'm going to click Cancel. And then in Blender, all you need to do is go to File, Import, and Import OBJ, and you're good to go. All right? So that's about that. Now let's talk about Bridge. First of all, you need to install Bridge because Bridge is an add on for Blender. So go to Plasticity website. You can just Google it Plasticity Bridge. The first page that comes up is, is you know, the correct one. Grab this uh, file here. You can also get it on GitHub. Download it and install just like an add-on. Okay, so go here to preferences, um, to add-ons. Go to install. Install the add-on. Then simply check the box, save preferences, and you're good to go. Once you do that, you should have plasticity add-on here on the end panel. So press N to expand the panel, and you're gonna see this uh, option connect. Now, in order to connect to plasticity, obviously you need to have plasticity running. So turn it on, and you can also check the port connection and all the details here so make sure that this is actually matching otherwise it will not link and then simply click connect and you're good to go now when you want to bring your model into blender simply click refresh and wait a second or something and it's going to refresh now occasionally model is going to come twisted at 90 degrees on the x-axis just press alt r to reset the rotation in blender and you're good to go now let's talk about these options because that's actually important first of all a refresh you know what it does Anytime you make a change in plasticity, you can refresh, but you can also live link. So now, for example, if I'm going to, you know, I don't know, add a cube here, for example, in plasticity or whatever, right? Let's say approve that and I'm going to go to Blender. You will see that the same element appear in Blender, which is really cool. So any changes you make to your model in plasticity going to appear live in Blender, which is fucking amazing. Okay, so if you have some problem or you want to move something, change something, you can do it very easily. You can also disable link, obviously. Now, scaling is quite important because Blender has a weird scaling. So if you bring something from plasticity, or let's say you want to 3D print it, make sure that your scale is actually correct and you can adjust it over there and then, you know, refresh it and you're good to go. Now, let's talk about these options because that's where the juice is, okay? The refaceting. So now let's say that you wanted to refacet this mesh, you know, because you wanted to do something in Blender with it. So you, know, you can't work with this one. Um, even, uh, you know, according to my standards, this is a fucking disaster. So, and I can't give you specific settings, but uh, I can give you a ballpark and you can work off of this because every mesh is going to be different because it depends on density, angles, etc. Right? So what I would do, I would switch this to, uh, you know, to angles here, then go with the minimum value here at um, 0.001, max value 0.1, go to angle, uh, the edge angle 01 and face angle 01. Now to break it down, uh, the angles going to produce angles and quads, tris going to produce just tris, obviously you want angles. Uh, mean and max is going to determine the density of the mesh and the angle of edges and face tolerance is going to determine the smoothness of curves, uh, you know, like on bevels and such. And the edge coordinates and face coordinates, it's the difference between the distance between edges on the original mesh and after refasting. So, for example, when you have mismatched edges on the bevel, they might move a bit. Uh, it will not change uh, the uh, 
shading, but it might help you with topologizing if you want to do that. So let's just refacet this and, you know, see that. That is pretty fucking good, right? I'm not going to this is good. So if, you know, someone tells you that cut spit shit meshes, well, plasticity bridge changes things. And this is, I think, just the beginning. Obviously, you're not going to have, you know, uh, loops around edges, etc. Like in a proper sub D. But, you know, this is a mesh you can work with, okay? Because, you know, for example, what you can do is go to operations with hard ops and go to clean mesh and you can get something like this. Now, be careful with hard ops because hard ops may remove some stuff that actually is needed for running clean topology like here. So, you know, you may want to actually play with the settings because it's just merged by distance, the same feature, right? But let's look at this disaster here. Let's say that, you know, you wanted to actually make this bevel usable for whatever you want to do. You wanted to, you know, reduce the resolution of this bevel. It's actually doable because now plasticity doesn't come with custom split normals. You can use bevels, you can use uh, weighted normals, you can use booleans in Blender, which means we can actually fix topology manually. So watch this. I'm going to just give you a brief presentation, okay? So what I can do here is, let me just turn on my screencast key so I can see what I'm pressing. I'm going to be working with machine tools, with the cleanup, with mesh machine hard ups. I'm going to be using all the add-ons for this because, you know, uh, doing this in vanilla blender, fuck that, okay? So what I want to first do is I want to remove edges I don't need. So what I want to do is I want to maintain the number of edges here, but remove all the redundant stuff and match them, you know, these edges with these edges together. So I'm going to press shift one with machine tools to uh, bridge this together. I'm going to nuke this one. So dissolve uh, edge. I'm going to uh, merge these two together with shift one, shift one and going forward. I'm going to nuke uh, this one. So dissolve it. I'm going to merge these. Let me just change the uh, uh, view distance here because I'm clipping. There we go. And then here I'm going to nuke this edge. We don't need it. We don't need any of these. We don't need any of these. Okay. And this is going to mess with this curvature because of course now it's a little bit of a mess. But what you can do, you can use a loop tools add-on to fix that. So enable loop tools. It's a bridge. It's a blender native add-on. Go to uh, loop tools uh, here and space. And it's going to evenly space all these verts between these verts, two verts that hold the shading of the bevel between these two flat surfaces so the, the you know the shading will not uh, get ruined it's going to get actually fixed so space them here then uh, combine these two here with one these two as well we can actually even remove these because we don't need them and then just simply keep fixing the spacing here you can see what's happening slowly we are fixing this uh this bevel so uh, let's go to loop tools and space then go here and uh, space, and then go here and space, right? Now, the technique we're using in uh, Game Asset Production is that what we do is we grab a bevel and we remove every second edge in between the, um, you know, the, the, the holding edges, the edges that hold the, the curvature, which are these ones, this one and this one. But in our case, we have um, actually an incorrect number of edges, so we can't do it. We need to do it twice. Because when I do it once, you see that I'm going to have two edges here and one here. So it's going to be uneven, right? So I'm going to remove this once. I'm going to do one more time, right? Or what you could do is actually use spacing. So you could do either this or just use spacing. So let's just use spacing, okay? So let's go to vert mode. Select these verts again and go to loop tools and space. Go here and, uh, you know, space. Go here and space and go here and space, right? And you can see now that our bevel is actually of a much, much smaller density. It's not as crazy as it used to be. And you, you know, you would need to do it all the way down, right? But uh, you can see, you can see clearly what's happening. You know, we, we slowly getting this stuff fixed. We can combine these two as well and rerun the spacing again. So if you really wanted to run a proper cleanup, you actually can. So you can see that there is no problem with shading here. The shading holds. Everything is peachy because we were using mathematical equations to fix this. Okay. And you can compare this bevel, right? This mess here to this one. And this looks very much like done with Blender. So if you now fix all this going down to the bottom, you could actually use tools like, uh, you know, mesh machine to remove bevels, to fix bevels, to adjust bevels, etc. So you can actually remodel this in Blender if you really wanted to, right? Another way, for example, of cleaning these meshes would be to mark in um, a loop 
uh, then marking this as a seam and then you can actually select with L within a seam and press F to clean all this junk that you don't need and you could do this you know, on the entire mesh. You can also go ahead and retopologize it which is going to take a bit more time but if you really need quads that's the best way to do it. Now let me talk to you about the uh, unwrapping tools. Now the unwrapping tools I would not recommend them for mesh like this because this is very much you know kind of angular mesh, boolean mesh uh, this would be quite simple to unwrap, basically using uh, very basic, you know, unwrapping techniques that we use in Game Asset uh, course uh, of ours. You can check it on our website. So, for instance, if I was unwrapping this, I would obviously clean this. So I would just, you know, refacet this, right? Do that. So now here, what we need to do is we need to select all these uh, sharp edges and mark them as sharp. I wouldn't be using these tools, honestly. I would be just going to select select sharp edges and then simply mark seam so all the sharp edges are going to get marked as seam and then all you need to do is simply you know break these shapes into smaller ones right so again if you got this kind of a disaster of a bevel you need to clean it up the way i showed you but you know you can just break them up in parts like this with seams and then when you unwrap this it's going to unwrap pretty cleanly now when you actually work in an organic mesh that's a different story so let me just change a mesh here this is a bit more complicated even if i um if i refacet this if you wanted to select uh, you know some of these edges it would be very tricky right so what you can do you can actually go to rendered view and you can paint plasticity faces this is fantastic because what i can do is select specific faces like this face and let's say I don't know, uh, this face, and I'm going to, you know, select plasticity uh, faces, it will select just these two faces, so now I can select plasticity edges, which will select edges around these faces, and then I can mark seam, which will allow me to run seam exactly when I want it. So that will be the way you could uh, mark seams on a mesh that's organic, you know, by simply selecting these uh, faces, and then selecting edges, and then marking them, okay? So that's it about plasticity bridge. In a nutshell, if you are working on a more angular mesh, just bring it in and fix it manually. You don't have to retopologize it really. It's going to take some time to fix it, but hey, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, if you're going to bring organic mesh, it's a bit of a bastard. You may need to retopologize if you really need quads. But I still think it's quicker than building stuff from scratch using subd in Blender. And also, it's a bit more precise. Because plasticity is using mathematically correct connections and curves and all that. You can bridge stuff, you know. Um, uh, and in Blender, you're moving very, so you're kind of eyeballing shit. So if you want to be really precise and have really, you know, clean A-class surfaces, you just can't beat CAD software, okay? So I would rather do that. And uh, you can always, like I said, retopologize it. You can shrink wrap it to your mesh and you're good to go. Uh, so if you want to create game assets this way, I think it's the best way to do it. And in angular mesh cases, you simply grab a mesh, you can fix it if you want to. You can always drop the topology using refaceting to the minimum amount, you know, of topology that allows you to still retain the clean curvature and then simply fix all the issues and you're good to go. So yeah, in a nutshell, these settings are very situational, so you're going to have to play with them and see what works for you. But I think that's it for the bridge. That's all you need to know. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.